Word, son. What do you do, YouTube? It's your boy, Jay Devine. Uh, what do you do, everybody? You listen to this podcast on whatever platform you listen to this even on. Uh, it's your boy, Jay Devine. Just Devine. Jay Devine. It don't matter because I answer the either or. Today's date is Tuesday, March 15, 2022. I know it sounds a little bit different right now because I'm actually using my phone. I'm in a hotel right now. Uh, I had to step out for a little bit, you know, because I'm, I'm away from my uh, my actual recording equipment for the time being, you know what I mean? So um, please forgive me for the, uh, for the different quality but um yeah man like i said this podcast is still gonna hit the same way either or um this is kind of on short notice because i was saying to myself i was like well damn i didn't upload a video on monday so i was like well you know you know how am i gonna be able to get video done for tuesday unless i wait like super late till i get home tomorrow but i was like let me just do this on the video i mean on the um do it on the phone, man, and see how we come out. You know what I'm saying? So I figured I'd do it that way. But um, either way, man, like I said, make sure you sit back, chill, take a pee break, pause the video, get you some popcorn, because you know how I do. Every other platform you're listening to this on, you know what I'm saying, whatever pertains to you, make sure you're going to handle that. Um, And I, I say it all the time when it comes to the platforms because I, um, cause I don't really know exactly where i'm going to upload this podcast on what platform is going to be on so i just wanted to um you know just always say that because at some point i'm gonna put the power i'm gonna put the episodes on there whatever platform i decide to find but um like i said man we're gonna just go on get straight up into it man um so this was pretty recent you know what i mean so i figured this is a good time to go and dive into this you know what's the name but um, if you hear anything in the background, please forgive me. You know, I'm in a hotel room, so, you know, th- everything's not really soundproof in here. So, um, yeah, but anyway, so um, so I know, in the, I know in the last episode on the podcast, I talked about uh, this girl that I met, and we pretty much got to kicking it over a bag of Skittles, you know what I mean? And, of course, you know, I I, um, I really like the girl. And um, I, I, I got to say, I, I don't, I don't want to, like, kick myself or beat myself up about it. You know what I mean? Because I've been doing that like for a little bit now. But um, as of just recently, I have um, I have noticed that she blocked me on um, on social media because I had her on social media. I had her number, but she got she got a new number, and I added her on social media, and we were talking through that. But let me give you the backstory behind all of that, right? So um, so um, the last part that I left off, which basically we were just talking, right? So. Picking up from where I left off on the last episode of the podcast, I had um I was I was talking to her and basically we were we were chit chatting back and forth or whatever and you know I don't really know too much anything of her or about her you know I mean only for what she tells me now you know she she disclosed to me that you know her mom is a single mom so um so with her mom being a single mom you know her mom and dad are separated so um, what she was telling me was that you know her, her dad's side of her family is pretty stressful at times. And, you know, she deals with that from time to time. Now, me as a guy, you know, especially like, you know, I don't know if you're into astrology or anything like that. I'm really not. But sometimes, sometimes that shit can be really, you know, coincidental, if you will. So um, one of the things about me as a Virgo, we tend to overthink a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, keep that part in mind. Um, I was, I was basically... I was basically talking to her. She was telling me about how stressful her, her dad's side of family is. And, you know, as a guy, you know, you don't really know exactly what that means. So, you know, you know, that can mean a multitude of things that can mean either, you know, her dad, you know, her and her dad don't really get along that well. Or, you know, her, her dad, her, her and her dad get a well, get along well. But her mom, I mean, but his side of the family is giving her hell for whatever reason. You know, what I mean, it can mean a multitude of stuff. So I tried to like, you know. I, you know, I try to make pick the scenario that made the most sense. So, you know, like I said, I don't really know what the relationship between her and her dad is. She never really went into that, nor did I even ask. So um, she was telling me how she was going to get a new phone through because um, um, well, through her dad's phone plan, because that's that's how she's getting her phone bill um, taken care of and stuff like that. So, you know, I was like, OK, cool. So she said that she was going to get her a, a new number or whatnot. So I was like, all right, cool. So the thing about that was. Um, about the new number most of the time or if you get a new phone for me let me just let me just say this for me i don't know if every other phone is different but most of the time when you get a new phone they transfer your stuff over right then and there you know what i'm saying like they do it that that like they do it that day you know what i'm saying when i got when i went from the s9 to the s21 yeah was the s9 yeah when i had the s9 i went to the s21 plus when I did it, of course, I traded in my phone, but all the stuff that I had from that phone, it transferred over to the new one. 
I'm sorry, it was something in the background. I was like, what the hell was that? My bad. <clears throat> We're going to keep it going. We're going to want to take this. But anyway, um, so basically, um, you know, I transferred all my stuff over to the phone that day. And when I did that, you know, they made sure they do that because, you know, they have to make sure your stuff is transferred over, then you go about your business. So I was doing that. And as I went to go do that, um, you know, everything transferred over, everything was all good. So, you know, it takes no more than, you know, that day for your stuff to get over, whether it's numbers, contacts, even messages came over, you know, stuff, stuff of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so, you know, um, that was the last thing that she left off, but I remember her saying that, you know, but I really want to see you, you know what I'm saying? Type shit. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? So most of the time when you get that as a guy, that means, you know, that means that, you know, you actually making progress. Cause you know, most of the time the guy's always the one that says, you know, Hey, I want to see you, you know, type shit. Right. So, um, so, you know, she texted me, I was like, yeah, you know, me too. You know what I mean? Type, you know, type shit. Right. So, um, I was, what was I doing? So, um, that was cool or whatnot. So most of the time we would text each other, like, you know, good morning and stuff like that. Even though she wasn't really a fluent texter, if that makes any sense, even though she wasn't really big on texting like that, she, um, you know, she would at least text good morning, you know, and, and go on about her day and she'll just text when she can. So I was cool. You know what I mean? I wasn't really pressed for her texting me back. So, um, so as she's, um, at, you know, as the day goes on, you know, I text her good morning the next day. From that day, I text her good morning and she never hit back. So I'm like, mm, okay, cool. You know, whatever. Maybe she had a long day or, you know, maybe she's just busy. Maybe she overslept. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I, I just, I know her, I know her pattern. You know what I mean? So I left her alone. Didn't really worry about it. Most of the time, if she don't text back that morning, she'll always hit back later that night. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll chop it up then and there. But, um, you know, she didn't text back all day. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I thought that was kind of, you know, weird. You know, but I was a little, you know, outside the ordinary because you know, you know, as a guy, when you're texting somebody and, you know, you, you kind of know their pattern, you know what I'm saying? You're not really pressing it, but you know, their pattern and you know, like something is kind of out of the ordinary whenever they don't hit back, like, like, you know, like their normal selves, you figure something to be up, you know what I mean? So, so she didn't hit back the entire day. So I'm like, hmm, okay. So the second day she didn't text back at all. You know what I'm saying? Like I got no text back, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So me, me personally, I worry about people. Like I, I care for people. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if, if I genuinely like fuck with you, like if I genuinely fuck with you, like I will like, I will make sure that you're okay. Like I check in with people I care about. I know a lot of people say that just to say it because it sounds cool, but I will, I will literally go out of my way to make sure just to check and see that you're okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, there's a backstory behind that too. But, um, um, matter of fact, I, I'll get into that before we keep going. So, um, there was this girl that I knew and, um, oh, geez, I'm sorry. Um, cause I'm on my phone looking at my text messages, but, um, so there was, so there was this girl that I knew and this is so long ago, but you know, we, we would talk, you know, we would always talk and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? We would text back and forth or whatever. And we texted damn near every day, you know what I mean? And, to make a long story less long, she didn't hit back in three days. You know what I'm saying? I figured something was kind of like fishy, right? Come to find out that the girl was missing and then come to find out when they found her, they found her body, she was dead. So, you know, it was, it was so, so eerie. It was so close to home. You know what I'm saying? Like that could have been like my, I could have been, if I had a, if I had a sibling, that could have been like my sister. That could have been my cousin. That could have been somebody close to me that that happened to. You know what I mean? So, you know, it shook me so bad that like it, it made me want to, really check on people if I had the chance to really check on people, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know what I mean? So back to the story, she didn't hit back in like two days and we ain't never went that long. So immediately I started kind of worrying, you know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, before, um, before it even got to this point, mind you, I picked her up from, from the school that she, that she went to or whatever. We met that, we met her like that. I took her home, you know what I'm saying? I brought her lunch, you know what I'm saying? Like we was really hitting things off, you know what I'm saying? So I figured everything was, you know, cool. So, um, so what happened from there? So, um, so, you know, so I started getting a little worried, you know what I mean? Cause I didn't really have no other way of getting back, 
getting at her or whatever, but I had her number in my phone. So I had her on Snapchat and then I also see if I could find her on Facebook and lo and behold, I typed her name in and it popped up. I was like, cool. So there's two ways of me, you know, getting in contact with her. If let's just say her number transferred over and she lost her stuff, she has another way of contacting me. Right. So, you know, I waited, I waited, but just that worry, that worrisome side took over me. You know what I mean? So I sat there and I was like, you know what, man? Let me let me go check on her. Like, let me let me see if I can go. Like, you know, let let me go let me go see if I can check up on her. Because I was talking to a friend of mine back in Texas, and she's a she's an older woman, very very beautiful, very, very beautiful. She has a great podcast too. Um, she's actually she's actually working on one too. Great podcast, great great podcast. But um, um, I was I was even a guest on that podcast. You know, little sidebar, but whatever. So um, I was I was talking to her and I was telling her about what was going on, and she said, "Yeah, that's kind of." It's kind of iffy, you know what I mean? Because she's on the same same tone as me with people getting abducted, kidnapped, and missing. Because you know she that the girl the girl who I was talking to she was a very like very very sweet person. You know what I'm saying? Like she was different. Out of all the people who I talked to, she was she was different. She wasn't loud. She wasn't really she she wasn't loud. She was extra. She wasn't materialistic. You know what I'm saying? She was she was really you know, humble down to earth. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she, she knew what she wanted and she tried to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Like she wanted a car. She was working towards a car. She went to school being a pharmacy tech. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she was really going for what she wanted. And that to me was that, that to me was just, that was like, that was cool to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, that, that's somebody who I wanted to like, you know, be around that, that wants for themselves, but don't want nothing for me, but just me. They don't want my money. They don't want anything materialistic from it. They just want me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was cool to me. So that's why I clung so close to her, you know? So, um, so, so I was talking to my friend back in Texas and she was saying like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you should go, you know, go on over there and see if, um, and just go check up on her, make sure she's okay. Cause I, cause I, I told her that I took her home already, you know, she, cause she gave me the address where she stayed. So took her home or whatever. And, um, you know, I also, I knew where she worked cause I pulled up there that one time to get some skills and that's what she worked at. So, um, so she had, um, um, so she was like, you know, I was, I was like, yeah, cause I was, cause in my mind, I was like, you know, let me just wait. Let me wait for her to at least reach out. I was gonna give it one more day and I probably should have gave it one more day, man. But you know, that, that, that worrisome side took over in me, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so I was like, you know, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna give it one more day and see if she just hit me back on one of those. You know what I mean? So, so she was like, she's like, look, I'm gonna be so honest with you. Like, you know, that's kind of weird for somebody not to hit you back in two days. So just, just make sure she's okay. Just go do a wellness check. So that's really all I was doing. You know what I'm saying? That's where my heart was. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was, like, I, I was just worried about, you know, what could that have possibly meant that her and her dad's side don't get along? Maybe the mom and dad don't get along that well. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? There's a plethora of possibilities. So I just went with the worst case scenario, like any other person would. You know what I mean? So so I so I put, so I put some clothes on, put my stuff on or whatever, and I drove maybe it's like 20 minutes to the next city. Drove to the next city where she stayed, and I went to the store and I, I legit went to the store. I had to pick up some snacks. I, you know, your boy was long some snacks. So I went in there, picked up some snacks and then, um, went in there and I went in there and I didn't see her. So I was like, Hmm, okay. So she's not, she's not at work today. All right. So went in there, got my snacks, got some beef jerky, got some Powerade or whatever, picked that up, got in the car. And I was like, all right, <sighs> I was nervous at this point. Cause I was just like, okay, this can go one or two ways. I can either just draw the line here stop and just wait for her just to hit me back and then if she don't hit me back after today then i'll go over there and make sure she okay or i can do it now just to cover all bases and then say okay well she's not at home she'll hit me she'll hit me when she can you know what i mean like i said i was really back and forth on really doing this i was so back and forth on doing it and, you know, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's some stalker shit. Oh, I, that's that's something that a stalker would do. And it's like, you know, dude, shut the fuck up, man. Because the, the, the thing, the, the thing that, that, that differentiates me from a stalker to someone who genuinely cares for someone's well-being, a stalker is going to do everything in their power to keep to keep being persistent with making sure your presence presence is known. 
Okay. I know when to, I know when, and I know when not to fall back. You know what I'm saying? Like, all I want to know is just to make sure that she's okay. Once I know that she's okay, cool. I can relax my nerves. I can just chill. She'll reach out when she can. That's all I want. That's, that's, that's it. That's all I want to know. That's it. Are you okay? That's it. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't hit me back in two days. I just want to make sure you're okay. That's it. You know, so, um, so I was like, so I was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I said, fuck it. You know what? Let's just, let's just go on over here. Let's just go. Let's go over here. Just check, make sure, check, check, see if she's home. Make sure she's okay. If not, whatever, she'll hit me back when she can. So I drove over there, went over there. Not a lie. I was, I was literally shivering in fear. Because I was just like, dude, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know if her mom is going to be there. She's want, she going to want to know who I am. Or I don't know if her dad is over there. I don't know if the mom and dad touch base periodically to make sure one another's okay. Or whatever. I don't know the dynamic of shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, this doesn't go awry if I pull up over here. You know what I mean? So pulled up, sat for a second, took two, three deep breaths, got out of the car, walked to the door, Run the doorbell once, waited, and I stepped all the way back. You know what I mean? Because I think they had a peephole. So I stepped all the way back, you know, just to make sure they, they see who I am, if they peeking out the window or whatever, or whoever's there. You know what I'm saying? Waited, waited. Then I run the doorbell again, step back, waited, waited, then waited. I was like, all right, whatever. No answer. All right, cool. So I just I left it at that. Didn't really ponder on it too much longer. I was like, okay. She'll hit me back when she can. It is what it is. So, um, God, this is really like fucking with me, man. <sighs> okay. Um, so sorry if I sound bored or, or if I, if I sound real like uninterested, but it is, it's still fresh in my mind, especially with this most recent update too. But, um, so, um, I had, um, what did I do? I had, I went to, um, I started making my way back home. So as I made my way back home, mind you, I had her on Facebook and I had her on Snapchat. I get a notification that she adds me on Facebook. I'm like, cool. Yes. I'm like, bet. You know, I'm, I'm in the car fist pumping. I'm like, yes, cool. All right. So at least I know she all right. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? I was worried about it. So she texted me. I was like, oh, okay, cool. She was like, she was like, Hey, I told you I got a new phone. You know, it didn't, uh, you know, all my stuff didn't transfer over and some other stuff, right? So I was like, I was like, yeah, I didn't know if I, I told her, I said, yeah, I know, but I didn't know it would like take like two days. I thought you might have lost my number or something. She's like, she's like, no, I'm just, I'm just getting a new number or some of that she said. And then I remember her saying the words that said, I'm uncomfortable. She's like, but I'm uncomfortable. I was like, well, what do you mean? And she was like, you know, um, she was at the dealership around the corner from her house. And I guess she was with her mom. And with her saying that, um, her mom saw me on her camera, on her camera at home. Mind you, when I pulled up to the house, I didn't see no camera. That camera was very well hidden. I will say that. But, I mean, I don't care about no damn camera. I don't have anything to hide. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I just I just want to do a wellness check. I, I had no intentions on doing anything ill, ill-gotten. Anything malicious, no nothing. I just want to make sure she was okay. That was it. You know what I'm saying? But, um, damn, I lost train of thought. Anyway, so she had texted me and told me that her mom had saw me, and I was like, oh, shit. So, so when she told me that, I was like, damn. You know, I, I didn't, I, I thought about, you know, what the mom could be thinking about me, but then the same as that time, I thought about what the mom could be saying to her about, Who's this random guy at my door? You bringing random guys to my house and just X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought about all the things that her mom could be telling her. And, you know, she could be, you know, chewing her out because I'm pretty sure now she she lost a bit of trust. Um, she lost a bit of trust in her daughter now because I'm pretty sure she trusted her to, you know, be home by herself and stuff like that. Now she's, you know what I'm saying? Now she's in hot water because of me, because I pulled up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I so I made sure I told her, I said, you know, I, I I really apologize for spooking your mom and you. You know what I mean? If 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 she's more than open to it, we can sit down and have a conversation about, you know, what my intentions were because I have no ill intentions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have anything to hide. If she wanna know anything about me, you know, the door is open. You know what I'm saying? I'm more than willing to sit down and let's have a talk. 
You know, because like I said, I really liked the girl. I really did. You know, what I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really see a lot of people that were built like her. You know, what I mean, so so when I came across her, it was like one of those things where it's like, when you see those type of people, you should hold on to them and hold on to them tight. You know, what I mean, because they're they're a rare commodity in the world. So, um, so anyway, um, so I, so I told her, you know, what my intentions were, and I told her about the girl that went missing. About three, but no, the girl didn't take back for three days, and a week later they found her body, and she was dead. Um, you know, I told her about that or whatever, and you know, like I said, I I, I profusely apologized, like I said, because I didn't want to put her in a bad spot, and the same as that time, you know, put bad thoughts into her mom's mind about her when it comes to guys, and then you know, she she don't know her mom don't know the first thing about me, so whatever she could be saying negative about me or what it may seem, it's not true. That's why I said if you want to sit down and have the conversation, we could definitely do that. But, but I'm not a, um, but I'm not anything that what you think could be uh, possible about me in a negative light. That's not me, you know what I mean. But um, at, at the same as that time, you know, the girl is relatively young still. Like she's like she's 22. I'm 26. She's 22. You know what I mean. So you know, as as a 22 year old, which I can say, you know, you you don't really you don't really make decisions quite yet on your own all the way out of a hundred percent of you making decisions. I say 70% of you are you 70, maybe 60, maybe 70% of you is of, of it is you making decisions by yourself. The other 40, the other 30% is someone like your parent making, helping you make those decisions. You know what I mean? So and what I didn't want was, excuse me. I didn't want, um, what what I didn't want or what I'm thinking is I hope that her mom isn't projecting onto her what a what what's what a guy is when they do that in a negative way. That is, you know, what I'm saying like I'm seeing it from a half full versus her seeing it half empty. If she's looking at it that way, you know, what I'm saying I hope she's not in her mind. I hope she's not in her ear telling her that you can't trust these guys. Which I understand because, you know, you got guys out here that are buck wild when it comes to women and they don't really understand when it comes down to um, when it comes down to treating a woman with respect. Because down here in Georgia or not right here, right where I am now, but in Georgia, you know, there's been reports of women being assaulted, being shot at, being shot, you know, what I'm saying being verbally berated because of because of um of them turning down a guy. You know, what I'm saying I'm saying so as a result of that, women have to be on their, you know, be on their P's and Q's. Because, you know, it can be like that and you can turn up missing, you know, what I'm saying or or your life will change just like that. You know, what I mean, so what 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 I am hoping that her mom isn't doing is is in her ear telling her what a guy is when they do stuff like that. You know, what I'm saying he could be a stalker, He could, you know, scaring the girl into making her think that yeah, he could be a stalker. Yeah. You know, what, let me block him or or her or her mom telling her, yeah, you know, you, you should just block him. You need to focus on yourself or whatever the case is, bro. The point I'm trying to make is, man, Um, you know, I, I, I really if I care for someone, I'm going to make sure that they're good. You know, what I mean, whether we're thousands of miles away, whether you just right down the street, yo, you good? Yeah, you straight? I bet. Just checking on you. Just checking on you. That's it. That is it. You know what I'm saying? I have no no malice in my heart at all whatsoever. None at all whatsoever. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure she was okay. But, um, you know, at, then after a while, she said, uh, she said, hmm, I don't know. I, I just, I'm going to just keep my space for right now. I said, damn, all right. You know what I mean? I just left it at that. So I was talking to the girl, the lady back in Texas. She's a, she's an older woman. Like, um, she gotta be like maybe her fifties. Right. But you know, but we have history together. So, you know, um, so she was, um, she was talking to me and I was talking to her. She was just like, she was like, well, you know, she, she understands where I'm coming from, but you know, all the things I've named off is she, she agreed with, she was like, that's probably how her mom is seeing it. You know, and hopefully, you know, hopefully her mom isn't, you know, twisting her head up. You know, like everything that I just said, that's what she was echoing too. And um, she just said basically, um, she was saying basically like, you know, hopefully, ho hopefully she doesn't see it the way that is generally being seen. You know what I'm saying? Like she, you know what I mean? that That's what, that's what she's hoping that 
she doesn't see it as. And then um, just recently, before I started this podcast, and I said maybe about 10 minutes before I started it, um, or I started recording, um, I checked to see if she stabbed me on Facebook, and come to find out, she blocked me. So, um, and the only reason why I know is because, like, you know, you know how you go into, like, Facebook Messenger, and you click on the name, and it say this person's unavailable on Facebook? Like, yeah, so I clicked on the name, and come to find out that, you know, I got blocked, so... Yeah, um, it it kind of fucked me up, man. To be honest with you, you know what I mean? Because um, like I have absolutely no mouths whatsoever, you know. And I don't want to point fingers at any parties, you know. what I'm saying I don't want to blame the mom, you know, because I understand that you that you care for your daughter's safety and for the safety of your home and well being. I get it, you know. what I'm saying, but um, but it's just you know I, I feel like if if someone's going to great lengths to, to, you know, to check up on somebody or just to, I, you know, I, I'm not going to say see your daughter, but just to check up on your daughter, like that should kind of mean something, you know what I'm saying? You might not know me, but if, if your daughter is showing interest in somebody, then maybe you should check that person out to see if they're there all the way before you jump to any conclusions. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that, that's why I hate generalizing sometimes because, you know, it's easy to put everybody in a generalizing spot just to just to say that that's the end all be all when not everybody's like that. You know what I mean? So um yeah, man, like that 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 alone fucked me up and I'm really not too uh really not too hot about that. But um but I um talked to a few people and they, I pretty much I'm I'm not gonna beat myself up over it anymore. You know what I mean? But I know my heart was in the right place and um you know, sometimes your intentions just really don't, your, your intentions kind of get overlooked. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess, man, like, I guess that's just where I have to leave it. But, um, yeah, I, I really liked that girl, man. I really did. And I'm not on like no suicidal shit. Don't worry about that. I'm, I'm cool. But, you know, that just kind of, it kind of sucks. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was just being me at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I didn't I have to put up a front. I don't have to fake anything. Like, I was just being myself. That's all I was doing. You know what I mean? But, um, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be, I'll be quite all right. You know, few, few people I talked to say, yeah, man, just, just scratch that charge to the game and keep it moving, bro. You, you're going, you're going to find something better. So, um, yeah, but I, um, yeah, I'll be all right, man. I just gotta, uh, you know, just get, you gotta, you gotta get through it. To, you gotta go through it to get through it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I'm cool, man. I'm good. <clears throat> All right. So, um, moving forward, um, let's try to perk up a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm not gonna lie, man. Um, I, I say a lot of times, G, like, it's okay to, to take a break from social media. Like, it, it's, it's okay to to step away from TikTok, from Twitter, from Facebook, from Instagram, Snapchat. Like it's okay to step away from social media sometimes. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I've I've realized that, which I might have talked about this in the podcast episode before, but I realized that when you're when you're sitting down and you're all you're doing is opening up Facebook or social media, whatever your preferred social media platform is when you open in that up, you know, it's easy to lose yourself in that world and you completely forget about what you currently exist in. It's easy to to see maybe one or two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe 20 posts about something about the detriment of this kind or you see how men are acting towards women or you see how women are acting towards men or you see how uh, society is doing this to that. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to to see that a multitude of times and then you're immediately just, you'll snap into thinking that that's how it is all the time. You understand what I'm saying? And then you'll wreck your brain trying to find it at every turn when it pops, like, you know what I'm saying? When it comes time for like some sort of a discourse, you know what I mean? And it's like, yo, like you have to like live your life. You have to. You walking around here trying to immediately find a flaw in a black man or trying to find a flaw in a black woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so bad that a former friend of mine, bro, like, like it got to a point where I don't follow her anymore, but it's almost like entertainment to me. It's like, it's almost like damn near comedy to tune in 
and watch and see the shit that she's talking about. You know what I mean? Like I said, there, there are probably some validity to some stuff that she's talking about. But it's like, you cannot tell me that you wake up and you just immediately find something to be triggered about. You know what I mean? Like, there's so much more in the world and in life to be worried about than what some motherfucker's putting in a, in a 200 character max post or tweet or status or I'm sorry, I lost train of thought or status on um, on social media. Like, come on, bro. Like, there's so much more in the world to be worried about than just that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's it's almost like it's almost like that one meme. Where like um, it's a picture of this person that's riding a bike, right? They're riding a bike. They grab a branch, stick the branch in between the tires, the spokes of the tires. They flip over and fall and they blame somebody else for them making them fall. You know what I'm saying? That's the analogy I be using when I see people talk about, you know, black women this, black men that, black women this, black men that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like it's like you're, you're, you're purposefully tuning yourself to to only look at the negatives when it comes to black men and black women. Let's focus on the positives for a second. You know what I'm saying? Like you mean to tell me that there's not enough, there's not enough positive stuff to, to, to even out the negative shit, if not overpower it, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you cannot sit here and tell me that it's okay for you to log in to whatever social media platform and find something negative about a black man or a black woman. You know what I'm saying? You curate at the end of the day what you see. You know what I'm saying? You have the power to curate what you see on social media. If you don't like something, you can take it off. You can take it off your timeline and the timeline will put better shit on there if you don't want to see that no more. You literally wake up, log in social media and find some negative shit to talk about because that's all you curated too. You know what I'm saying? There's so there's so much more positive shit to talk about than there is negative. You putting so much energy in a negative shit. Or, or just trying to be quote unquote woke about shit that you could you could be spending that same energy finding positive shit as hard as you're digging to find some negative shit to say about something or somebody you could be putting that same time and effort and finding some positive shit to talk about you know what I mean that's why I say yo get out of social media log out of that shit sometimes man go live your life go be around some positive people for once you know what I'm saying I know they say misery loves company but it's like my god man like like you can't you can't sit here and just only be focused on negative shit 24-7. You just can't. You know what I'm saying? Anytime I see some negative shit about whether well, it's what a woman does or what a man does, I immediately skip past that shit. If I can't, I'll take it off my timeline. I don't have time for no negative shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I just don't have no time for it. Because that same negative energy you're putting into that shit, you could be using that to uplift somebody. But no, you want to play into that shit and, and confirm, oh yeah, that's what women be doing. That's what men be doing. Nah, man, stop that shit. Like, stop. We're like, let's let's uplift one another. But you got people that be like, nah, it ain't my job to uplift anyone or it's their job to be uplifting us. See, that crab in the barrel mentality shit right there is why motherfuckers will never get anywhere in life. Because y'all because y'all y'all too y'all too pride y'all too prideful to help anybody. I'm never too prideful to help anyone. If I can, I'll do it. But y'all have y'all too y'all got too much pride and ego to help one another. Oh, well, statistics, we're not talking about statistics. We're not talking about, oh, the history of men and what they got. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about two human beings that want to get somewhere in life, but there's negativity surrounding. How are we going to overcome this negativity? Let's uplift one another and get each other up out of this negativity. But people are not trying to do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's why, that's why I don't too much fuck with Twitter. I just, I just don't. You know what I mean? But tuning into her Twitter and just watching her just spew about shit is crazy to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay for this to happen, but it's okay for that to happen. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's just wild to me. That, that shit is, that shit is mad wild. You know what I mean? And like I said, I don't follow her. I, I actually have her muted on Twitter, but I'm just like, you know what? Let me log in here and see what kind of crap she's talking about now. You know what I mean? To, to me, it's, 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 it's comical, but yet delusional. Like, that is a prime example of delusion. You know what I'm saying? Like, you are, you are curating, purposefully curating your timeline is to, to have negative shit to say about men and women. You might say it's truthful. I say it's bullshit. And all the reason I say it's bullshit is because it's generalizing. It's very, it's very, it's a very generalizing statement. You know what I mean? And then when you tell them that it's okay, yeah, it's generalized, but don't you feel like, no, I don't feel like that. No, you know what I mean? There might be some validity, but I don't feel like that 24 seven. You know what I'm saying? You say up, I say down, you say left, I say right. 
you know what I'm saying? That that's just me. I don't I don't buy into that 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 pandering shit about what men this and what women do that and I don't get into that shit. That to that shit to me is corny. I can't stand it. I hate it. I really, really do. But yeah, man, um, yeah, take, take healthy breaks on social media, man. It, it's healthy to do that. Just, just do it. Just do it one time. Do it for two days. Just do it for two days. Log out of social media. Don't even log into social media. Just stay out for two days. All social media accounts. Then log back in and, and tell me you don't feel the difference. But, uh, moving along, man. Um, so one night I was, um, I was looking at, uh, NFL fever, man. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, man. NFL fever, they have some shit, man. In, NFL fever looked really, really good. For um for for its time, like I, I was looking at the player models, player models look good. Like two thousand four, I think two thousand four was the last iteration of NFL Fever. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Like that game was different. Like I really, I really liked NFL Fever. You know what I mean? Like I never played it, but just looking at it for what for what it did at that time, my god! Like that game looks really really good. The player models look great. The running look good. The blocking looks great. The the passing mechanics look good. Everything looks smooth and cohesive. For a game to be damn near 18, man, almost 19 years old, that looks good. That looks really, really good. Like I'm really um like I'm really honestly glad that, you know, you know, we had different different choices for football games. You know what I'm saying? Like, um one of the things I was noticing about NFL Fever was how they um it, it it was for the simple fact that they had a um what do they have like when when you were running with the player they had them cutting but they had them shifting their own weight based off of how they were running like like if they were trying like if they were trying to go like okay say for example they were running at twelve right twelve was like straight ahead right and they were trying to go like nine o'clock to eleven o'clock right. Like they would like literally shift their weight around and cut their feet up to like you know to make it to make it work like you know what I'm saying like to like to shift their weight around shift their weight around and I just thought that to me was just so cool like to me like to me that was cool that was that was that was something that was ahead of their time you know what I mean that was way ahead of their time you know what I mean like I, I think about sometimes you know if if these if these um if these entries didn't go the way that they went like you know what I'm saying would it would it still be would it still be what it is? You feel me? Like, you know, like in NFL fever really has something special, man. And the, the first, the first chance I get to get an Xbox, that's going to be the first game I play. Cause I really, I got to see for myself if that game is really what it is. You know what I mean? And I'm going to try to put it on my channel at some point, but I really want to play NFL fever. Cause I want to see if that's really like, if that's really what it was back in the day. I think it is. You know what I mean? I never played it, but yeah, that, that game looks very, very promising. Looks very promising. Um, moving along, so um, I have NFL Blitz Pro. I have NFL Blitz. No, I played NFL Blitz, and I have NFL Blitz Pro. Now, I remember NFL Blitz when it first came out. I remember playing it at an arcade. I remember playing that then. Then I remember playing it on Nintendo 64. Then it came to Dreamcast, and then that's when it started kind of like evolving to what it is. But I remember like I remember seeing Blitz, and as a kid, I was like so amped. I was like, "Yo!" I was like, "Yo, this is Blitz. You got guys on fire. You can hit him after the whistle. Yo, this is tight. I love this." You know what I mean? I was like, I was so amped. Like I remember when I had a Dreamcast back in the day. Um, I saw so old saying that shit, but um, I remember I had a Dreamcast back in the day. And what you could do is I don't think a lot of people knew this, but you could burn Dreamcast games onto a blank CDR CD. So, um, so there's this guy in my apartment complex. He literally stayed right across the street from us in the apartment complex. He stayed like literally cause like if you, if you went down the stairs from where we stayed at, if you know, if you looked at the window, you saw the mailbox and then right across in the mailbox was another set of apartment. Com I mean, was another set of apartments in the same complex upstairs is where he stayed. So at the time he had such a fast computer for that time period that he could take any, he could take any uh, game, GameCube, any Dreamcast game that you want and you pay him $5. So if you paid, if you got, um, if you paid, I mean, if you got four games, you paid him 20, but $5 a game, whatever you wanted, he'll take it, burn it, give you the CD, give him the money. I mean, he, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. I'm one taking it, <laughs> but, um, you give him uh, you give him the money, you give you the CD, Go bonkers. I had I had the entire Dreamcast collection. I swear to God, I had damn near every game, but the last game I wanted was NFL Blitz. I swear to God, I wanted that game so bad. 
I had every game but that one. You know what I mean? And mind you, this is this is even after I played uh, NFL 2K at that time. And um, and my God, man, I wanted that game so so bad, but I just could never get my hands on it. I I asked Spendell all the time. Yeah, damn, I'm trying. I, I want this game right. I want this game right. He was like, all right, all right. I I got you. I I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Never, never actually even got a chance to get it. You know what I mean? But eventually, over time, I ended up finally getting a chance to actually play it. So, um, anyway, so with NFL Blitz doing what they do, because I, I did, I think that's when Midway started coming out with NFL Blitz, 20, they called it 2001, 2002, 2003, and then 2004, I think. No, 20, 2002 or three. It's 2002, but 2002 or 2003, I don't remember what was the last iteration, but Whatever was the last one that had Strahan on the cover, I think that was 03. When they did the next one, they did Blitz Pro. Blitz Pro, if you if you um if you saw it, Blitz always had it was six on six. So it was six v six, six on defense, six on offense. But if you played pro, they had all twelve on offense and all twelve on defense. It still had that, that blitz feel to it. But it was just it was more of a laid back type of blitz. You can still hit after the uh you can still hit after the um the whistle and stuff like that, grab them, tackle them and stuff like that. But once you um once you did that, you had to um you had to actually um what's the word? Like was you had to actually play some kind of football, you know what I mean? But like I said, the the goofy blitz antics was still there, but it was just a little bit toned back. You actually had twelve players on offense and on defense in order for you to, you know, to play or whatever. But I remember NFL Blitz Pro being different. And I, I remember that because that was one of the TOs on the cover. At the time, I really I wouldn't really rock with T.O. until he came with the Eagles, so it had to be in two thousand four. But um, but yeah, man, I I thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was really really cool the fact that they did that. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, it was, it was different. You know, that was at a time where well, football games wasn't afraid to do something different. You know what I mean? You had your you had your turn of the mill simulation games like you know two K Madden and stuff like that. Then you had your goofy over the top games like NBA Street, NFL Street, Blitz. Uh, NBA Jam, you know what I mean? You had you had different you had different subgenres within genres, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I, I remember playing NFL Blitz Pro. I actually have that right now, but um, I, I remember seeing it. That was one game I remember very vividly from my childhood. And I I really had fun with that game. I had I had a lot a lot of fun with that. You know what I mean? Then that's when Blitz started doing Blitz the League, which we'll we'll talk about that some other time. But um, you know, but NFL Blitz Pro, I definitely remember that game. Um, switching gears, man. I was I was thinking to myself, man. Can can two K really reclaim the throne? Like, can can they really get their way back to the top and really own football like they used to? Yeah, I think they can. Honestly, you know, what I'm saying, feel free to talk amongst yourselves in the comment sections about it. But I, I feel like I feel like two K can make the comeback, but I don't think it's gonna be in the style that we wanted in. You know what I mean? Because they were talking about how they um how they were going to like you know do it like a, a, an arcade type style of football. You know, I don't really know how I feel about that, honestly. You know what I mean? Because I don't really know how they're going to go about it. You know what I'm saying? They say arcade-like, but could that be a ploy for them to say arcade because they can't make a simulation football game, but they can say arcade and and, and put that as their front runner, but you can tone it back to be a simulation game. You know what I'm saying? The simulation element is still there, but they're not pushing it off as a sim game. You see what I'm saying? So who knows? It could be a ploy. It could be a play on words, whatever the case is. But I, I think 2K football can do it. It's just going to take some time. Because I, 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 best believe when they drop, it's going to be mixed reactions, I think, when when they finally do decide to drop. I think. I really think so. But uh, let's keep it moving. Uh, Battlefield 2042 just recently put out a uh they just recently put out a um an update that's supposed to update the scoreboard there's a scoreboard and what else did they do uh they fixed the they fixed the aim assist on console and some other stuff but the scoreboard that was the biggest fix i'm not gonna lie to you man i'm I'm still rooting for um i'm really really still rooting for um um for 2042 man i'm rooting for them i'm really still pushing for them to really like you know get it together but they got to do one hell of a pivot to come back, G. They got to do one hell of a pivot to come back. I'm still rooting for them. I've been playing 2042, honestly, like that recently. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I, I still I still rock with the game, but it's just they, they got to get it right first. Once they get it right, I'll be back on it like I left something. You know what I mean? But other than that, I mean, 
they they got they got to get it right. And you know, I'm not knocking them for where they're at or what they had to do and how the game is. I'm not knocking them for it. The only reason why I'm not is because that's not the only first person shooter that I'm playing. You got Call of Duty, which I pretty much damn near despise because of the stupid ass algorithm. But you got Surgency Sandstorm. You got Hell Let Loose. You got Enlisted. I can go on PC. I got World War Three that I've been playing recently. I got uh, what else? I got um, Jesus. I, there, there's this one game called um, Ground Branch. You got that. It's another game. I got SWAT, uh, not SWAT, Ready or Not. I've been playing that. You know, it's it's a lot of the first person shooters that I can play other than Battlefield. So I'm not sitting here, you know, you know, sitting here, um, you know, up in arms about Battlefield not being this and this not being that. There's so many other first person shooters you could be playing other than Battlefield. So while you're sitting there complaining, you could be spending that time going to go play something else that that can pique your interest. I understand you want to play 2042, and I do too, but. You know, if you know the history, you know how these games released. Go back and look at the track record. They all have come out all fucked up. That's just what it is. So you can't get mad. You can't get too, too mad because this is on par of the course. Now, this has been a little bit worse than all the other uh, launches. But, you know, if you know DICE, you know that they'll bounce back. Like they, like Battlefield 4 had a major overhaul, major overhaul. I remember what it looked like before. But they had a major overhaul. So just keep in mind that Dice can bounce back. Excuse me. Dice can bounce back. It's just going to take time. That's the only thing I can say about that. So I'm still rooting for them. But, you know, I'll put it off to the side. Put it on the back burner. Let them get all, let them get all the issues, you know, fixed out. Get all the kinks and stuff and bugs squashed. And then, um, you know, I'll be back. But I know they said something about in the future that they're going to do like a major gameplay overhaul. So I'm, I'm, I'm tuning in to see how they're going to do that. But, um. But yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm giving them their time to get it right, and um, and yeah, man, um, I, I still believe in dice. I believe in them, regardless of what people say. I'm speaking for my own self. Maybe some people can agree. If you don't, don't argue with me. This is just how I feel. You know what I mean? But to anybody who feels the same way, you know, if you know, you know. But um, this this little glimpse on personal life, man. Um, I've been doing all right, man. I, I've been doing okay. Um, I don't work at Amazon anymore. I I um I left Amazon. Um, because I wanted to, uh, pursue a different, uh, go, go back to the re- recent, um, career field that not career field, but work field, workplace, uh, whatever you want to call it, man. Uh, I was in the medical field for a little bit. I was working in a lab before I came to, uh, Georgia. That was, that's when I was in Texas, but I left from there and I started, um, started working from Amazon. And then when I, no, I started working at America Red Cross, which is another lab thing left there, went to Amazon. And then I'm, I'm leaving Amazon. I left Amazon, which was like a couple of weeks ago, I left Amazon and um, and now I'm gonna be doing a work at home, uh, uh, work at home job, which is remote, and uh, I'll be back in the medical field doing that. So um, the pay is better, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I think my start date was on my start date is supposed to be sometime in April. So yeah, um, so yeah, man, that that's that's how my personal life has been. Other than you know the girl blocking me on what's the name, you know, I can't be too down about that because I'm about to level up. So you know. Cue the Modern Warfare 2 level up sound here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um but yeah, man, I am not too um I'm I'm not too I'm not too sad, not too down, you know what I mean? You know, it's life, you know, life life is gonna have its ups and downs. But what can you do? You know what I'm saying? So um Yeah, man. But um I think there's one more thing on the docket I want to talk about. So uh Tom Brady I'm retired, man. Um <sighs> Not gonna lie to you, bro. Like I don't care about Tom Brady. I just, I absolutely just do not care about Tom Brady. I just, I, I don't care. I don't. I've never seen people white knight for this man so hard the way that they do. Knowing the fact that this man has scandals, he's had cheating allegations. The shit. Some of them have been proven that this man is a a, a high class cheater. Some people probably put off a Belichick, but you know you guilty by association. But um. Um, I, I just, I don't care for Tom Brady. I just, I don't, I really don't. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't care enough to, to, to follow him and just, just to just like, like just gaze over him. I don't care for a cheater. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit to me is not a goat. That's not goat shit. You know what I'm saying? People want to tie the goat to Tom Brady because he has six or seven rings. That shit don't mean nothing. Four out of those five, four out of those seven rings or, or however many out of those rings, 
should be asterisk next to him. Should be should have a star next to him because a lot of them shits he got from the help of refs. That's one, and then two, you had rules that were in that were put in place of him because of just Tom Brady. You had Deflate Gate that was on his season. You had you had Spy Gate. There was a lot of shit you can put on him. There's a lot of shit you got on him. And some people that are hearing this, they're probably saying, "Oh well, well, no, nah, I mean he, he didn't do that. I mean that, that that was the team. It don't matter." It do not matter. You guilty by association. Do you really think that? Do you really think that if 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 you with a group of friends and they rob somebody and the police pull up on y'all, all y'all at the same exact time, and those guys that robbed that that convenience store friends, you friends with those guys, and you know they wouldn't do nothing wrong to you. They pull up on they pull up on all of y'all. You you all of them, including you, are going to jail. Why? Because you're guilty by association. That's why they're not going. They're not going to look at. They're not gonna look at you and say, "Hmm, you know what? You like you don't you don't hang in with this clique. Go and get out of here." But no, once they pull up on all of y'all, they draw guns on y'all. Everybody going down. Then once they figure out that oh, okay, well you wasn't with them, all right, you're free to go. Then they'll let you go. But other than that, you guilty by association off the rip. And that and that's what it's like with Tom Brady. So you can say whatever you want about him, but that man's a cheater. You know that's why I say when people say, "Oh, who's who's the goat of quarterbacks?" Aaron Rodgers. Argue with your mama. I don't care. Argue with your mama. I can't. I can't call somebody uh, uh, a goat who's a cheater, and it's been proven to be cheating. I mean, <laughs> do what you will with that. You know, what I mean, I, I don't. I don't care how you feel. Don't really. Don't too much care about how you feel. But whatever. I don't really care for Tom Brady uh, retiring, unretiring. I don't care. I really don't care, dude. <sighs> but yeah, man. Um, I'm trying to think, what else has been going on in the NFL? I'm trying to think. Um, a lot of, a lot of wicked shit's been going on, man. I think Jalen Hurts, I think they're trying to shop Jalen Hurts out. Oh, another thing. Um, this ain't on the docket. I just thought of this up just not too long ago. Yo, so Deshaun Watson, um, is not going to face criminal charges for uh, some of the uh, allegations about him, uh, with sexual assault. That's, I mean, that's, that's good, man. That's, that, that's really, really good. I'm, I'm glad that, um, I'm I'm glad that he's cleared of that. He still has civil to, he still has civil cases on him now, but you know at least that is you know some weight off his shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to think about it, man. You have some you have some athletes that are having their careers dangled over their head by somebody who can who knows what to say to try to end their career. This shit happened to Ezekiel Elliott. The only reason why Zeke didn't get hemmed up the way he did was because he had he had proof that the girl said, "I'm gonna tell him that you raped me or you sexually assaulted me, and I'm gonna fuck your career up." He had proof of that girl saying that on the text message. That's the only way he got out of there. But just imagine if he didn't have the proof. You know what I'm saying? And another thing, I, I will say this too. You know, I really wish that, um, I really, really wish that people didn't, um, I, I wish that when you got people that, that love to talk about, you know, black men, what they don't do for black women and how black women are, are, are being chastised by society and stuff like that. Those same people who talk about what black women have to um, accomplish, what they have to overcome, I want them to shed that same light on black men. I, I I want them to hold that same energy for black men because all I see is a lot of these these outlets and these platforms all talk about how black men ain't this and black men ain't that. But the minute that there the minute that there's positivity being shown from a black man or they've overcome something, they are quiet as a church mouse. That bothers the shit out of me because y'all are so fixated on negative shit or you're pandering to the narrative that black women are being chastised and black men ain't doing shit about it. Y'all run the narrative to the fucking ground. But the minute that there's some positive from a black man, y'all won't cover it. Everything is negativity from y'all. Everything is negativity. You push for the black man, black woman, but won't push for the black man. That shit bothers the fuck out of me. If that is what you do, please stay away from me. And don't give me no justification as to why you're doing it. I don't want to hear it. Stay away from me. Please stay far away from me. I don't want nothing to do with that at all. Point blank, period. Leave me the fuck alone. Stay away from me. That's energy that I do not need. And I hate saying energy. I really hate saying the word energy. Because y'all ran that shit to the ground. But that, but that type of mindset, stay away from me. Please stay away from me because I don't want anybody like that that's near me. I just keep it away from me. I don't want nobody like that near me. Straight up. But um 
But yeah, man, um, I'm going to wrap this thing on up, man. Like I said, appreciate y'all for checking this uh, episode out, man. This is a unique one because I did this with my phone. So if you heard anything in the background, please excuse me. And um, yeah, man, we're going we're gonna to hit this thing, man. We're going to get it back on regular schedule programming. Um, about the about the girl, man, um, you know, I'm not really, I'm not worried about it no more, man. You know, I'm cool. I'm keeping it pushing, you know. Um, it's going to say, you know, pushing P, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um. Yeah, but I'm gonna keep it moving, man. Um, like I said, I can't, I can't hang around my sorrow for too long, man. I'm not really too much worried about it, man. But I'm gonna keep it on, keep it pushing, and um, yeah, man. Like I said, um, appreciate everybody the love support y'all been showing, man. And to all my black folks out there, man, keep doing you, keep doing your thing, man. You're special, you're somebody, you're royalty, you're a king, you're a queen. Keep doing you, man. Definitely keep doing your thing. Um, to everybody else out there, man, you know. Um, appreciate love support y'all been showing, man. Love the uh, love the interactions on the videos. I'm gonna still keep doing these podcasts, man. Even though the interaction ain't the same as from a regular video that I normally would do, I'm gonna still keep it pushing, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, no excuses. 2022, man. Just do it. Whether you fail, whether you succeed, just keep it pushing. So what we gonna do, man? Keep going. No excuses. But yeah, man, I'm gonna wrap this thing on up, man. Appreciate love support y'all been showing the videos, man. Make sure you hit the like button, comment, subscribe, share the word spread links. You know how I do on the platform, man. Whichever platform you're listening to, whatever, whatever applies to you, make sure you do that so you get more of my content. But I'm gonna wrap this thing on up, man. Make sure you hit the like button, comment, subscribe, share the word spread links. You know how I do. I did this shit at least three times already. <laughs> but I'm gonna get up out of here, man. It's your boy Jay Devon, and I'm signing out. Peace.